Welcome to Global Public Health Podcasts, where we learn from each other about the global and local intersections in health. Hi, I'm your host, Lauren Clark. I'm a professor of nursing at the University of Utah College of Nursing, and I'm bringing to you stories from students with insights into global health. Today we're going to hear from Deborah Penny. She's a nurse midwife with both an MPH and a PhD and she's on the faculty at the University of Utah. Her story is about being in a place and time in Afghanistan as a project evaluator for a maternal child health grant. And she's going to talk about the political realities of that situation. Hi, my name is Deb Penny. I am a nurse and a midwife with a master's in public health and I have been working at the College of Nursing for about 16 years. And I come with a background in the Arab world where I've spent most of my life. Okay, so I wanna tell you a story about my trip to Afghanistan as an outside consultant. Um, And I started the journey after I had completed about 17 years back and forth to Yemen training primary health care workers and nurse midwives upgrading health centers in Jalalabad, Afghanistan. And I thought, well, that's fine, I'll go. So I went. And I, and I flew into Pakistan, got oriented to the project, and then I drove with a, an Afghani driver over the Khyber Pass, which is a rather volatile, busy border between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Because there's tribal um, discord on both sides, both in Afghanistan and Pakistan, it's a little bit of a dangerous place. You know, I I asked if we could go like for a hike or something. We did go to outlying health centers and they said, no, no, absolutely not. You cannot even get off the road because there's so many landmines. So that was sad. So I arrived in Jalalabad and I was carted around by a Dutch nurse who was part of the project and she was to introduce me to several levels of people and projects and I my job was to see to write a report to see if this project should continue or not and the first person we met was the director of the hospital He was a nice Afghani man. And all of these people that in positions of power had been just placed there by the Taliban. He was was very friendly and very nice. But then when another Taliban person came around, he was quiet and stern. We toured the hospital. Uh, We talked to a lot of the workers. They had a midwifery training program and a medical school at this hospital. And all education for women had been banned up to that point in the whole country of Afghanistan. And this was a new thing by the Taliban. But the local people had, or the hospital director had given permission for the midwifery and the medical program to continue. And in these programs were a lot of women being trained. They have a midwife and a nurse there, very minimal. Uh, medications to give, a place where people can have a clean birth. And I also toured the hospital and I saw the delivery room was a sad, a sad state of affairs. They had a flat table, which I'd also seen in other places, um, a flat chrome table to deliver on, no ability to raise the head. Stirrups were made of um, leather that hung on poles. And they had the convenience of a nice vinyl-covered sponge for the women as a cushion, but it had cracks in it. And as I toured and asked questions, I realized that there had been recently a huge number of women who had postpartum infections and babies that were also sick. And I, would, I was wondering if I was attributing that to the cracks in this um, vinyl-covered sponge that they had on the top of this table. Anyway, in the process of all this, I was housed there for like a week or so and in a guest house that had no air conditioning and it was pretty hot. So what I would do, which I learned to do in hot places, was to get my sleeping gear on, which happened to be a, an Arab, long Arab robe, and get into the shower, 
before I went to bed and just get it totally soaked and then turn the fan on. And that was my air conditioning and then I could go to sleep. We did have an exciting lunch with the Taliban. Um, so I, I put that on my CV from time to time that I've had lunch with the Taliban. At one point I was being, I had to have interviews with successively higher people in the administrative health administration. So we finally got up to the highest guy and I thought of a question and I thought, oh, should I ask this or not? So I said, what the heck? What do I have to lose, right? So working through a translator, I said, you know that women and children are really important in a country because they determine the health of the country. If women aren't really healthy, they're going to have unhealthy babies and you're going to have a weak population. I am so glad that you have reinstituted this training for the midwives and for the physicians so that women can be educated and also serve women because in a Muslim country, I know this is important that women be seen by women and not men for their medical care. What's going to happen in 10 years when women can't read and write? Because at this point, you know, the, the country was banning any type of female education. So that went through the translator. They talked back and forth, the translator and this Taliban guy. And sure enough, the question comes back to me, and it is, we want to know if you're going to build a pharmacy. So totally different subject, did not answer my question. I took this back to, when I um, talked to the head of the project in Pakistan. I said, why, why do you think he said that? And the project manager said, you know, he, he may be for women's education. He may be sending his own daughters to Pakistan to be educated, but he is in this high position and it's a matter of survival. People join the Taliban because it's how you survive. It's how you, you continue on and have good things for your family. So he obviously didn't like the question, so he didn't answer it. It was, it was good to be there. And as you know, historically, this was 2001. So a few months after that, the U.S. went in and bombed um, Afghanistan. As a result, um, there was a lot of um, problems that trickled down later on. About three years later, they were rounding up Arabs here in the United States unjustly. And I can't remember why they were doing it, but I was on a list because after this experience, I had turned in my passport because it needed to be renewed. And sure enough, there was a Pakistan-Afghan stamp on it. And so that prompted the FBI to seek me out. They came to my house, asked me several questions, like, do I have sympathies toward Arabs, of which Afghanis are not Arabs, by the way? Um, do I plan to go back to the Middle East? And did I have political conversations with people while in Afghanistan? Mind you, this is three years past. So did I remember every conversation I had in Afghanistan? No, not at that moment. But it sort of unnerved me that I would be suspect for, you know, helping people out. Nonetheless, that is my story. And what can I take away from it? Well, I found that women and children in low-income countries have pretty much the same needs. Even though Yemen and Afghanistan looked really similar, people are people. And when you don't have resources, you have similar needs no matter where you live. Um, and politics are always going to be a picture in any kind of development work, whether you're doing agriculture or healthcare, politics between countries really do play a role. And if you think, oh, I just want to go over there and help people and not be politically astute, I mean, you can be to an extent, but you become politically aware the more you live and work in a different country. And you see your own country from out, an outsider's view rather than an insider's view, which is also a learning experience. Dr. Penny's story talked about inconvenience at a couple of different levels. On the most basic level, she spoke about the heat. 
But when you think about it a little deeper, she also spoke about some of the difficulties women experienced in giving birth and the discomfort of laboring on a chrome table. She also spoke about the political difficulties passing through the Khyber Pass and some of the dangers that became part of her experience. And last but not least, she spoke about coming home to the United States and being suspected of unsavory activities due to her, her time in Afghanistan. So in many ways, Deb sums up for us some of the political risks as well as the inconveniences of midwives and nurses who serve in international settings. Thanks for tuning in to the Global Health Podcast, where we learn from each other about the global local intersections in health. I'm Lauren Clark. Thanks for joining us.